Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us. This week, the federal government invoked the Emergencies Act, an extreme law that has never been used, and it announced two emergency orders that will have sweeping consequences on individuals, orders that it passed outside of ordinary democratic processes. The Canadian Civil Liberties Association has spoken out loudly against this declaration, and today we have our own announcement. We are taking the Government of Canada to court. We are here today because of the government's response to the protests and blockades. The government's emergency declaration is unprecedented and seriously infringes the charter rights of Canadians. For all the peaceful and disruptive protests in Canada's history, some involving unlawful acts and protracted standoffs with police, never before has a government declared a national emergency under the Emergencies Act and with that given itself the enormous powers to bypass the ordinary accountable democratic process. Our commitment to equality and other rights is the reason that we strongly support the charter right to peaceful assembly. This is how marginalized people can stand up for their rights. Protest is how people in a democracy express and share their political messages of all kinds, whether they be environmental activists, students taking to the streets, indigenous land defenders, workers on strike, people who know that Black Lives Matter, and others who oppose government measures of all kinds. Our society needs peaceful assembly, a critical democratic tool. And even though not every person may agree with the content of every movement, many protests are disruptive. It is possible for a gathering to be both disruptive and peaceful and nonviolent. Disruptive protest, while often unlawful, like shutting down pipelines or camping out in a public space, can be the most effective way of raising awareness. And at protests, many different kinds of people might end up in the same space, joined by a common cause. The fact that some of the protesters may break laws, act aggressively or oppressively, does not necessarily mean that other protesters share their extremist views or conduct. The Canadian Civil Liberties Association has retained counsel to launch a judicial review challenging the government's invocation of the Federal Emergencies Act. The Act gives the executive branch of the government extraordinary powers, and the legal threshold to use these extraordinary powers is intentionally high. Ensuring this threshold is met is a critical protection for the democratic process, the rule of law, and the civil liberties of individuals that may be impacted by these emergency orders. In our view, the threshold set out in the Emergencies Act, the legal requirements put in place to safeguard our democratic processes have not been met. Section 3 of the Emergencies Act requires that there be a national emergency, a temporary, urgent and critical situation that seriously endangers the lives, health or safety of Canadians and is of such proportions or nature that it exceeds the capacity or authority of a province to deal with it. It also encompasses serious um, uh, situations that seriously threaten the ability of the Government of Canada to preserve the sovereignty, security and territorial integrity of the country. In either case, the emergency must be such that it cannot be effectively dealt with under any other Canadian law. We do not want to minimize the impacts that the protests are having on people across the country. But while some of the blockades have been immensely disruptive, it is unclear that the ongoing protests endanger the lives, health or safety of Canadians so seriously that they constitute a national emergency. It is also far from clear that our existing laws and police powers are ineffective in confronting this challenge. Police deal with extremely complex, difficult law enforcement situations every day. Local police across this country have cleared several highly disruptive border blockades and are successfully managing numerous other protests in communities across the country, all without emergency powers. There are some localized situations that have proven much more difficult to police. But the emergency orders that the government has passed are not targeted. They are not limited to specific protests or specific geographic locations. They are expansive emergency orders that apply equally across the entire country. And they place unprecedented restrictions on every single Canadian's constitutional rights. In other words, they apply to everyone, you, me, 
everyone. These emergency orders currently in force place severe limits on peaceful protest. Police have now been given the authority across the country to shut down a wide range of, police, of peaceful protests if they're snarling traffic or blocking sidewalks. Protests that take place close to bus stations, hospitals, or COVID-19 vaccination sites are specifically restricted, even if they aren't disrupting traffic. The order also requires financial institutions to turn over the personal financial details to CSIS and the RCMP and to freeze the bank accounts and cut off all financial services of people who have attended or have provided assistance to those participating in a prohibited assembly. Again, these orders are not limited to Ottawa. They don't apply only at the border. They are not specifically targeting trucker convoys. These orders limit the rights of every single Canadian with a particular focus on people who participate in, travel to, or assist with the protest, no matter where it takes place, no matter the issue. There are thousands of protests in Canada every year. Protests about climate change, Indigenous land claims, anti-Black racism, and yes, protests in support of and against public health measures. The vast majority of these protests are entirely peaceful. These orders potentially apply to them all. We believe that the federal government's invocation of these emergency powers is unlawful and unconstitutional. The Prime Minister has repeatedly said that the Charter of Rights and Freedoms continues to apply. We agree. And we believe that these measures are clearly un unconstitutional. We will be asking the courts to step in to defend the rule of law and the constitutional rights of all people across the country. We plan to file a notice of application for judicial review to seeking a declaration that the emergency order and, and the emergency order, the measures and the orders promulgated under it are not consistent with the Emergencies Act. This is the first time that a government has relied on the Emergencies Act. It is important from a rule of law perspective for the courts to scrutinize these actions and ensure that they are consistent with the purpose of the legislation and that the government does not overreach or infringe on the charter rights of Canadians. Thank you. I will now be taking questions from the media. Nous allons maintenant prendre des questions des médias. And your first question, we do have one from Pamela Van Meer at 411 News. Please go ahead, Pamela. Hi there, thanks for taking my questions. Um, the uh, Prime Minister has said that these measures would be theoretical in nature and you're saying that they're not and it will um, impact every single Canadian. Can you expand on that a little bit and how they would impact every Canadian? Yeah, the, the Prime Minister has certainly said that the measures would be targeted. The actual written text of these orders is not limited uh, to specific cities. It's not limited to specific provinces. It applies across the entire country to every single Canadian. Uh, so they are not geographically limited. They do not target specific protests. They apply universally across the country. I would, I would add okay. one note to that, if I may. They apply across the country, including those provinces whose premiers have said that they do not need the emergency powers under the emergency.